We're back to the Neil Haley Show and also the media giant effect. And I'm here with the founder of Simpikovich Concussion Institute, Dr. Charles Simpikovich. Dr. Charles, again, I love coming to talk to you because ultimately you have finally come up with a way to treat concussions in a way that's going to get you back to a normal life. I think a normal life is something that when you've had multiple concussions, a lot of people feel they're never going to have. Am I correct? Yeah, that, that's very true. Uh, and a lot of the patients uh, actually are very concerned about that when they come in. And they uh, a, a lot of times they know areas that they've been compromised in and other areas they don't realize there's been a problem until they get better. And they're, they're like, well, I didn't realize that was an issue. Like uh, I had a fella who uh, was in a motorcycle accident. And matter of fact, his helmet actually saved his life, but he was in a coma for a few weeks. Once he got out of the coma and, and healed, he, he came into the office. And the third day he, he said to me, he goes, you know, my color vision is back and it's vibrant. And I said, we never told me your color vision was gone. He said he had no idea it was gone until it came back. And that's actually very common. A lot of people uh, uh, tell me that their color vision gets like reds go from a pale pink to a bright red, but so it's all encompassing and, and, and the symptoms from concussions are, are so great uh, uh, that you never know what it, what it's going to be. Um, and then there's other things they're very aware of, like, they're like, okay, I'm, I'm having severe pain and headaches or my memory is just not the same. And, and uh, we, we just had a, a lady finish up today uh, who was saying her, her brain fog is just lifted. Mm -hmm. She's just sharper. Uh, so yeah, a lot of times, uh, uh, and, and a big comment I get is, um, you know, they've just been everywhere and they're told this is the new you, this is your new norm and you need to get used to it. And, and that's really a shame because that's, doesn't have to be that way. Yeah. And then get them back in that new normal. We don't want to hear that. And again, that was incorrect as we see how we've overcome COVID and gone on to back to our normal lives again. So there isn't a new normal and there's not a new normal when it comes to concussions. So the, what's we're talking sports industry, injuries today, and we're going to go through a variety of places to get sports injuries with the head. And what, what should be that response? Let's talk football. First of all, as I remember, I played high school football for one year until they got me into basketball. And it's funny when you talk about you worked with the Duquesne team and basketball for head injuries. I didn't even consider a concussion as anything when it came to basketball. And probably I could look back and say to myself, you know, what? I've, I, I think I gave a lot of people concussions on the court versus sure. me with my elbows. But that's me with my swinging elbows. Shout out to Sarah Catholic back in the day. I didn't take any hits because I was taller than everybody on the court. And now, so let's kind of jump right into when you talk about in sports injuries in football, you know, you have a practice, you get your bell rung. How many of them are really getting things checked out? And this is, this is a, called a bell rung. This is not called, uh, this is called maybe 80 times in a practice, especially back in the day, if someone's listening to this now or watching this now, where they had a practice and they remember, Hey, they saw stars a few times and really are they checking this out, first of all? And how quickly should you go ahead and see someone like yourself when this happens? But, you know, the the, the thing about it is, is uh, our knowledge of concussions and the effect of all these blows to your head has really uh, grown over the years since I started doing this in 1986. Uh, what I knew then, I thought I, thought I, I knew a lot, but it's just really evolved to where we have so much more information now. First of all, the, the big thing people have to realize is you're never gonna get rid of concussions in life ever. They're, they're here, um, you know, and in football, if you're gonna play football, you're gonna hit your head. And whether you have multiple smaller blows or if you have a big concussive event, you, you're never going to make rule changes that are gonna get rid of concussions, not only in football, but every other sport too, basketball, um, you know, even baseball, I've had baseball, you know, I had a pitcher who was hit by a line drive in the head, ended up having seizures and couldn't learn. So uh, the thing about it is how do you, how do you this? And, you know, with education and a lot of those players have, and, and the doctor I work with uh, have, have said pretty much once people discover this treatment exists, everybody this will become the standard of care for all concussions because it's really the only thing that gives people a chance to uh rehab their brain appropriately 
the way I foresee it is, is football teams, hockey teams will have a physician on staff specializing in this because it's better to be proactive than reactive. So you can actually keep somebody by checking them on a regular basis, making sure that these blows to the head are, are not going to have a detrimental or damaging effect uh, because you're going to hit your head playing sports and it's, it's impossible not to. Uh, so you and, and you can't make a helmet safe enough that you're going to stop that because the, the the blows get transferred to the head. It's just you, you you can even have a head injury without hitting your head. It's called a coup contra coup injury. If your head's whipped real hard, your brain actually bounces off the inside of the skull. So forget legislating um, safety. If that's the case, we'll have everybody quit driving because most of the concussions in the world come from driving, slips and falls. So, so the real thing is be proactive. How do you remediate it? How do you uh, lessen the uh, chance for damage from a concussion? My own son, uh, you know, he he played football from the time he was little, and uh, he, he there was a retired pro football player came in, and and the, this fella told my son the story. He was had grand mal seizures as a result of his concussions, and mm. it scared my son. My son quit for a year and then he came back and said in ninth grade he said i'm going to play football again and i said well, i thought you were going to quit and he said no he said because you can fix it he said you can fix these things now like yeah. this this fella his you know he you we, we helped him so uh you know the, the 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 real answer is you know managing these cases so that they don't um get out of control you know uh Cam Johnson is a patient of mine who plays for the Phoenix Suns. And, you know, when he was a pit, uh, he was, he came to my office two, three times a week, just to say, check me out, make sure I'm clean. I mean, he got elbowed in the head, you fall and you hit the floor, you know, you get need, you know, and you're felt, you're, you're, I'm like, you're six, nine, how are you getting elbowed in the head? He, well, he's playing with other guys, same size as him. So of course he's going to, I remember sophomore year, he got hit several, three times. He bit through his tongue during the season. Oh my goodness. So, so, uh, uh, yeah, you, 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 you're not going to ever make concussions go away. What it is, is what's the best appropriate, most appropriate treatment that is going to, to make, you know, concussions, not an issue or, or minimize the damage that they do. There's, there's other injuries from football that we recover from. I mean, if you, if, if you break your leg, you, 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 you're coming you can back to an arthroscopic surgery. You come back yeah. from the knee or you end well, up with a back injury. All these football players come back and play again. Exactly. So I mean, Cam Johnson tore his meniscus this year for the Suns and he's having surgery. He's rehabbing. He'll be back. And he'll be back. So th th that's where we have to get the mindset with sports and say, okay, what is the most appropriate treatment? And, and we want to avoid the case that we have with a lot of retired football players and hockey players that are experiencing CTE, chronic traumatic encephalopathy, that doesn't have to be the case anymore. Uh, you know, we've we've come, we've improved this light years, so that we don't, you don't have to be afraid um, uh, of of problems down the road. Yeah. So let's kind of jump into the said the the to keep stop those problems down the the road. If you and we'll just go football today. I hit, wow, we're gonna have another topic. Probably talk another sport. So boom, you're in practice. You're an offensive lineman, defensive lineman. You're the ones in practice that that always get hit, right? They don't have, a, and unless they've changed things, but again, if you've been an offensive lineman or a defensive lineman, you know that you're hitting your head many times, sure. boom, 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 all day. And you feel like your bell's rung and your coach never said anything about it. And that happens, right? If you're going to your parents and saying, I'm seeing some symptoms, how quickly should you come right to you? Oh, how immediately. Fast? Yeah. The quicker you get looked at, the better chance you have of, of, of treating the problem and making it not become an issue. But a lot of football players and, and athletes in general, they don't want to come out or say if there's a problem because they're afraid of being pulled from the game. Peyton Manning several years ago on ESPN, he even said that he would tank the impact test in the beginning of the, of the season and cheat on it so that uh, if he ever got dinged during the season and they gave him the test, he wouldn't have to come out. I mean, he said that on ESPN on an interview. So these guys don't want to come out. You know, you have bravado, you you, you, you competitiveness. Uh, uh, you you competed. I mean, you know what it's like when you're yeah. young. And you, you you you're, you're just you gonna keep coming back. On, you're just gonna keep on. You're invincible, exactly. Sure. So when that happens, uh, you come and see you. That's pretty much be able to do that because ultimately you're gonna be able to see if 
there's other concussions. So when you examine a patient, you're able to tell if they've had multiple concussions, right? You'll be able to tell certain things, right? Well, I, what I can tell is is if there's been trauma and what it's produced in, in a clinical setting. Like I'll examine somebody and and I'll be able to tell, you know, if their eyes are tracking or not, I'll, I'll, I'll be able to understand if there's a, a overstimulation of the right brain, uh, if the pterygoid muscles of the jaw are affecting the way the sphenoid bone's moving. So we have, we have a pretty, you know, the, 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 there's the first thing you do if there's a traumatic injury is, is do you do order CT scan? Do you order an MRI? You want to make sure that there's no bleed or fracture or tumors or a Chiari or anything that could be preventing you from uh, uh, helping them. And then if that comes back clean, then you do your exam and then you, 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 you what you're doing, we're in a restoration pro, uh, uh, business. We're restoring uh, normal physical health. But, you know, I've seen everything. I, I've had a guy in, in, I was taking a history, you know, his complaints walked me down a path. I knew there was a, a good possibility of, of a tumor the way he described the pain. So we did a CT scan. Sure enough, he had a malignant astrocytoma in his brain. He had to have surgery. I had another lady, by the way, we were walking, she was the complaints. Uh, she said a few things were red flags. So I walked her down the path and I'm like, okay, I'm put, I actually put her in a cab and sent her to the ER here. She had, uh, she, within an hour, she was in, in brain surgery. She had 11 aneurysms and thank goodness that's the, that's the role of the history and exam. So you can get through these things and treat the patient appropriately but she you know she luckily saved her life um so uh yeah there, there's a lot of it, that's the advantages to this work and the next goal is we're going to train doctors and open clinics because once people realize like i do research with willing university's physical therapy doctoral program and their lead researcher dr muhammad haddad today he's a brilliant researcher he, uh, he actually said, listen, once people understand this, this will become the standard of care for concussions because uh, it actually remediates the person and brings them back to pre-concussion status, wow. which is the goal. That's huge for sure. Where's the people can go to again, Simkovich Concussion Institute.com right now, and they can schedule time with you for today. So it's not like you're going to get, you know, a receptionist, you're going to get to talk to you and have the opportunity to have that first evaluation and figure out what the next steps are. Right. 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 Awesome. We well, thank you, Dr. Charles. Take care. Thank you. All right. You're listening and watching the Neil Haley show. And we'll be back in just a moment.